welcome back to the YouTube channel. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit unscripted compared to some of the things we've recently been doing. Uh, for the OG followers, a little bit more of the style from maybe 2018. Um, so if you enjoyed those videos, you'll probably enjoy that, this one. And also, if you're new to the channel, maybe scrolling back through our previous videos might be of interest to you because there's plenty of great content back from a couple years ago, which is where most of our subscribers are. Only recently did we get all creative with Donny Behind the Lens. But today we're going to be talking about um, a little bit of evolution, evolution of the human, how that has sort of created a new challenge for us as people, maybe not new in the grand scheme of things because we have been standing on two feet for a long time. However, in a gym context, it definitely brings about some consistent uh, hurdles that clients and athletes and people who are looking to get stronger or bigger face, especially when they're in uh, like a standing posture doing an exercise. So today, we're going to be talking about how your center of mass and the base of support, the relationship of those two things, how that may be influencing your squat performance. Science tells us that humans uh, were bipedal uh, as apes moved from the trees down into the open plains in the search of food. Uh, and as a result of that, we moved up to two feet to create a more efficient nature of walking or a more efficient way in which we can walk and transverse long areas and long planes. And this is what brings about two new sort of things for humans in the evolutionary standpoint. Number one, it meant that we are obviously standing. And when we talk about uh, a system, and a system in our sense here is a biological system, a human, compared to maybe something like a cheetah, um, th those two systems are, have some different limitations and some different pros and cons when we talk about either standing or in a quadruped position with all four feet on the ground. Humans obviously have an, a challenge when we're standing on two feet. And that challenge comes from stability of the system. I do ch bash stability a little bit. I don't think it's a training outcome worth looking for in your prescription of exercises. However, for this context, stability is something that we really need to consider because stability of the system is the management of the center of mass over the base of support. And for us as humans, Standing on two feet, it means our center of mass has been elevated and our base of support has been reduced. We only really have this small area around our feet when we're standing in two, like a bilateral stance. And if we move to one foot, we've really only got that much base of support. We've removed one of the, the bases of support or one of, the, one of the pillars that we're standing on. When we compare that to something of a quadruped animal, they have four four areas of contact, four points of contact. They have their front paws and their rear paws. Uh, and as a result, their center of mass is lower. Their base of support is bigger. They're a far more stable object when compared to us as humans. So that's the first sort of challenge that we have as a human is that we have to manage an elevated center of mass over a reduced base of support. Secondary to this is we created this, not a new system for breathing and respiration and gas exchange, but we, we created a whole lot of different ways in which we can change the shape of our torso in order to get air into the lungs and create gas exchange. We're not going to be going down breathing mechanisms of humans today. That's not what we are. That's not what this video is for. There are videos on the channel if you want to unpack that and get into that. And I would, I would recommend checking them out. Donnie can sort them out for you. However, in the standing posture, we created some different opportunities for us to get gas exchange through our, our body. Number one, we can expand our rib cage and compress our rib cage with our superficial muscles. Think about like your neck muscles, your pec minors, your lats and all of that sort of stuff. We also have the thoracic diaphragm that can ascend and descend. Um, and as a result of that, we can actually get a whole bunch of different pressure changes in the torso with a whole bunch of different strategies as humans standing in bipedal posture. And this is what gave us the best uh, success long-term for survival. Moving to two feet made it more efficient to move over long distances. We could then use our arms to throw rocks and throw spears um, and all of that sort of stuff from a, from a weapons perspective. And ultimately, it's how we started to just advance faster than all of the other animals on the earth. So it's fantastic that we became bipedal and learned to breathe and operate in this stance. So you might be thinking, what the fuck is this guy talking about? How does this apply to me squatting in the gym and getting better? Um, well, here it is, here's the connection. So a lot of people in the industry would like to tell us that our gait cycle, our walking st style as humans um, can be 
completely analogous to how we squat and produce force in a bilateral stance. I don't really like that parallel. I think they're too distinct. Yes, they have some commonalities and yes, it's a model and a way in which we can think and not all models are right. Um, all models are wrong, but some are, some are useful. Uh, I think it's Mr. Box, I think that's his name, who created that uh, quote. But I don't think we can draw that parallel too much. But what we can understand from a gait cycle perspective and a squatting perspective is this idea of how the system is managing the center of mass over the base of support. And pretty much when we walk through our gait cycle, we start on our heel as the center of mass is behind the base of support. We transition the center of mass over the midfoot. And then finally, we push off and propel ourselves as the center of mass moves in front of the base of support. And this is how we can start to look at squatting from a mismanagement of center of mass over the base of support and where most people go wrong. And that is when they're squatting, the weight gets kicked forward or their hips rise up and they shift back onto their heels. With this understanding of how the center of mass and the base of support, the foot is becoming a reference for us, we can now start to understand how most of the squatting problems that people face is just the mismanagement of their center of mass over the base of support. So your homework, if you are somebody that shifts forwards in your squats or shifts back and the hips rise up and the, the weight transitions to the heels, is I want you to become aware of where your center of mass is in relation to the feet. And this is a very simple task. You can literally just stand here with your feet underneath you, transition your center of mass forward over the toes, and you'll sort of feel how the system moves forward. We may extend the lower back a little bit. The pelvis might move into an anterior pelvic tilt. These are all strategies to move the center of mass forward without falling over. The second part of the activity is to simply move and shift your center of mass backwards to the heels. You'll notice that my toes have come off the ground. I've now moved into a relative amount of flexion in my system. My pelvis has rolled underneath me. My back is now a little bit rounder from the backside. I've, I've expanded on the backside and compressed on the front side. And this would be representative of the center of mass behind the base of support. Obviously, as a human, I've learned not to fall over in that position. So, if you struggle with your, your squat performance moving forward and your weight shifting forward onto your toes, or conversely, shifting back on the heels and the hips raising up, all I want you to do is be aware of where the center of mass is over your feet. And it's really quite simple. If we have a foot coming, here's a, here's a tibia, here's a foot. Looks like Didier's foot, that flipper, the Mediterranean flipper. But this would be a foot. Again, if we have pressure at the toes, we have a forward center of mass. If we have pressure on the heels, we have a backwards center of mass. What we want you to be able to execute from a squat perspective is to keep your center of mass somewhere in the mid foot and we sh and, and backwards and forwards is relative the center of mass is relatively forward compared to the base of support what we want for you is your mid foot pressure you may have heard a lot of people talk about this but we want to execute mid foot pressure throughout the entirety of the squat we want to be able to stabilize this system through a squat pattern moving within this area because as soon as we move too far forward or too far back we have to create some compensatory movements of the system like arching my back or flexing my spine to manage this issue with upstream strategies and that's not what we want to do long term so your homework if you struggle with forward squats or backward squats is to be aware of where your pressure is in your feet and then execute that in the squat keeping your midfoot pressure so yeah, a little bit off the cuff today, but we just have, this is quite often the most common issue that we see with squats. When you understand this, you pretty much understand squatting in nature, uh, squatting in general, sorry. Uh, and that's how I sort of draw the parallel from a gait cycle perspective uh, into the squatting and what evolution can show us and tell us about what we're doing in the gym. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, drop them below. Um, there's a whole bunch of this sort of content on previous videos. Uh, so please check that out if you are new to the channel. 
And also, if you've made it this far, which I hope you have, I mean, the metrics tell us that probably 50% uh, have left. And as we tell them, get stuffed to those guys. For you guys that have made it, thank you very much. Uh, it would mean a lot if you could interact with the video some way in a metric. Either send us a like, just drop us a comment, share the video on another social platform. Uh, it helps us get out in the algorithm. It actually helps us grow, our channel grow and reach more people, more ears and more eyes. Uh, and if you found this valuable, I'm sure there's gonna be other people out there that find this valuable as well. But we need your help to get it out there. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Happy lifting and good luck walking now.